Hey YouTube, this is Tom at TM Aquatics and I hope everyone's doing great. It is time for a summer update, but in interest of time and by viewer request, I'm only going to focus on the plecos. So if you like plecos, stick around. Alright YouTube, we're going to start out here in the rec room and this is my newest pleco tank. This is a 75 gallon tank where I used to keep all of my endlers. The tank has been completely transformed. This is where I keep my L494s. And these are a Pacultia. I picked up eight of them from Eric Bodrock a couple months back. You can see a few of them in the caves over here. They really like this uh, Pleco hideout that I slapped together. But these are a Pacultia Rio Peru. They'll get about five inches and uh, they are related to the L134. Leopard frog plecos, they're both Pacultias, so you don't want to mix them in the same tank. But I have eight of them, absolutely stunning fish, very similar pattern to the L134. But these guys have a little more orange colorations on their fins. This is a breeding project and these guys have quite a bit of growing to do, so stay tuned. All right, so over here in the 120 gallon red severum tank, I have a few different types of plecos that I keep. Down here is kind of an old, crusty, gnarly, blue-eyed ancestress male. And uh, of course he's uh, hiding right now, but nice big fish, probably about five inches. And then over here in this square cave, this is an L124 orange flame para. Uh, very close cousin to the L75 para. It's just this type of, uh, this specific fish, the collection point, they get a lot more orange coloration where the paras are a little bit more of a tan or yellow coloration. But he's an absolutely beautiful fish. Normally he is out a little bit more than this and just the way it usually works when I'm trying to film plecos, they usually uh, dart off and hide pretty good. But that is an L124. I know, I just saw my, yeah, I don't know if you can see that yellow way back there where the, the light is shining. <laughs> that is my gold nugget, and of course he's hiding. We'll probably get photobombed here with the Severums. This is my Scobie Ancestress. This is an L14 Sunshine Pleco, and he's a beautiful fish, he or she. Uh, about five inches in total length right now, and then you can see the tail to the right of that fish, uh, that is my L114 Cactus Pleco, which I haven't seen very much of, and uh, that fish has probably tripled in size since I got it. Uh, pretty fast growing little fish, but uh, these two are absolutely beautiful fish. They get along great. The L14 Scobie Ancestra Sunshine and the L114 Cactus Pleco. Both of those fish, by the way, will reach about nine to 10 inches in length. So enough on this tank, let's head back to the fish room. All right, so back here in the fish room, this is a 20 gallon long. This is a bare bottom tank, as you can clearly see. This is strictly a grow out tank for some young L134 leopard frog plecos. And I'll go ahead and lift the filter up and you can see a whole bunch back there. There's uh, 40 some in the tank. I don't know the exact number, 41 to 45 total in here uh, might be 46 but absolutely stunning a group of fry here beautiful patterns they all are extremely healthy and uh, should be ready for sale here pretty soon maybe another month I might actually start shipping now since uh, the smaller they are like this the easier they ship but in any case uh, these are a bunch of L134 leopard frog pleco fry all right, now this is a 33 gallon long tank and uh, this is where I keep my L46 zebras. I currently have eight of them in this group and they're uh, you know, putting on some nice size. They're still growing out. They've, uh, they're probably a solid nine months, maybe a year away from being sexually mature and ready to start breeding. But uh, I have, again, total of eight of these, and they were sourced from four different places, so there's a very deep genetic uh, you know, gene pool in this tank. I might add a couple more. I wouldn't mind having at least 10. I might even add as many as four more, and uh, something I've been thinking about here recently, but these are a carnivorous pleco, not a predator, but a carnivorous. So they're gonna enjoy a much, uh, heavier protein, meatier protein diet. 
They like a lot of water current, which is why I have a lot of power filters on this tank, uh, hang on back filters in addition to the sponge filters. They absolutely love their current, but uh, L46 Zebra is an absolutely stunning fish. Reaching a total maximum size of about maybe three, three and a quarter inches. They might get up to about three and a half inches, but overall a relatively smaller, very peaceful and uh, stunning Pleco. All right, immediate below the L46 Zebra Plecos, this is where I keep my group of L134 Leopard Frog Plecos. And uh, they started breeding for me back around the New Year's. And they bred for a few months. They stopped uh, breeding around or spawning around uh, the beginning of April. During that time, I got about 14 to 15 uh, spawns from them. At least eight of them were eaten by one of the males, one of the breeding males. And um, I still managed to grow out about 95 fry. So it was still a pretty successful breeding season for these guys. Uh, they seem to have shut down. They haven't had any spawns now for a couple of months. And uh, I've been trying to trigger them back, back into the breeding uh, mode, but I think their internal biological clocks have all shut down. These are all wild caught fish. So they very well might not start breeding until next December again. But these guys are the Picoltia compta. They're an omnivore, and uh, they like a nice mixed uh, diet. A little bit of green, a little bit of meaty proteins. They're an absolutely stunning fish, the L134 Leopard Frog Pleco. All right, and below the L134s, this is uh, a 40 gallon long. This is where I keep my group of L333 Port de Maz. And I have a total of 12 in this tank. Now, seven of them are adults, and of those adults, only one is a female, which is unfortunate. So I do have five juveniles that I picked up from Amy and Chris in Des Moines. And uh, I'm hoping out of those five juveniles that I at least end up with at least one or two more females. That would be nice. I'll probably get rid of a couple of the adult males because I don't clearly don't need that many. But these are a high pan cistrus. They're going to reach about five inches in total length. They like the... Uh, the warmer water temperatures, I keep them around 81, 82 degrees. They like a little bit more of a um, meatier protein, uh, like all high pan cistrus. So uh, a nice meatier protein diet, clean water, lots of water changes, and uh, they'll do just fine. But these are the L333s. All right, in this tank here, this is a 40 breeder. I keep a trio of L260 Queen Arabesque Plecos in here. I'm going to be shuffling some things around because I also have a bunch of green laser quarries in here. They like the temps a little cooler. The high pan cistrus like temps a little warmer. Probably not going to see any. Uh, I have two females that hide out underneath that driftwood there. I'll go ahead and drop a picture of one of the females up above. The male hangs out over in this red cave here. We'll probably see, and we can see his tail over here. I'll drop a picture of the male here as well. But they're a smaller high pan cistrus, getting around maybe a maximum of three and a half inches. Again, nice, clean, uh, warmer water with more of a meatier protein diet, and they'll, uh, they'll do just fine. But uh, these guys could probably do just fine in like a 20 gallon long or a 29 gallon, a pair of them. Uh, they stay that small. Absolutely beautiful fish, the high pan cistrus L260 Queen Arabesque Pleco. All right, the newest tank back here in the fish room is a 40-gallon breeder. This is uh, strictly a grow-out tank. The only plecos I have in here uh, that I'm currently growing out is a bunch of L134 leopard frog plecos. This group is a little older, a little bigger than the other group that we saw. There's about 25 or 26 in here. I'll go ahead and lift up a sponge filter. There's a few back there. But they're scattered in here. I'm sure there's some behind the box filter, some more back behind this filter here. Uh, I just sold 15 of these just a couple days ago. So 15 out of the 25 or 26 have been sold and uh, they've already been paid for. So out of this group, I really don't have any more available because I do plan to keep the remainder for myself. But um, I do have that other group that's coming up that's gonna be available for sale real soon. So. Anyways, this is a 40 gallon breeder. 
All right, so this tank here, this is a 75 gallon tank. This is where I keep my group of L397 Panaculus. They are a wood eating pleco. I see one out right there. You can see they're a orange and black banded fish and uh, absolutely stunning when they're juveniles. They're still beautiful when they get a little older. They do lose a little bit of that vivid coloring. But there is a male over in this cave and I noticed he's been twitching a little bit and acting a little curious so uh, he very well might have a female trapped in there which would be fantastic news because these have yet to spawn for me I have a good ratio of males and females in here again there's a total of eight but they're a wood eater so it's important to have several different types of driftwood in the tank and then uh, you just need to make sure you don't feed them any high protein foods I don't feed these things anything higher than a 35 percent protein try to keep it around 30 to 35 percent and um, they do get green beans and uh, some fresh zucchini and rapashi morning wood and then the driftwood that's in the tank but these are the L397 Panaculus. All right and the last tank we're going to show today this is another 75 gallon tank this is where I keep my L264 Sultans and I have a total of eight in this group. I have six juveniles, and these are juveniles down here in the caves. You can tell not just by the size, but by the coloration and patterns on their body. As they get a little older, they're gonna lose a, a lot of that white coloration. Here's a tail hanging out. If you can see a tail, I have two adults in there, and that's the female up in that piece of driftwood. And then hanging out over here, that is the male. They have not spawned for me yet, and uh, it's unfortunate, but they are breeding size. But they're more of an omnivore again, and uh, they do lean a little bit more towards a meatier diet. So, uh, you know, nice uh, rapashi bottom scratcher, uh, maybe some Ebo Aquarius stick. I keep this tank at about 80 degrees. These guys will get about five and a half inches. But an absolutely stunning pleco, the L264 Sultan Pleco. All right, YouTube, that's going to wrap up today's video. I hope you enjoyed the tour of all the different types of plecos I'm currently keeping in my fish room here at TM Aquatics. Now, before you go, do me a favor. Tell me down in the comment section below, what's your favorite pleco that I currently keep here in the fish room? And is there another type of pleco you think I should consider? Now, with that being said, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, hit the subscribe button. Leave me a thumbs up if you like the video. If not, hit the thumbs down, but don't be a coward. Tell me why. Appreciate everybody stopping by, and until the next one, we'll catch you all later.